uh, New York Times bestselling author, the social assassin, John Gilstrap. Johnny, good morning. Tomorrow you will not be on the Friday show because it, remark- it, uh, it marks the return of the Badger, Mike Hunt, to the I've Friday show. Sent to the bench. So you're back as the sixth man. Yeah, back to the minor leagues. They nah, wouldn't say minor leagues. You're like 4A, right between majors and AAA, you're in, in that limbo. I'll pretend so. I know what that means. Yeah, okay. just go along with it. Okay. Our guest in this segment is the president of the, Bur- of the uh, Jefferson County Commission, Steve Stolifer. Steve, good morning to you, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good, good morning. Thank you. Uh, Steve, obviously by now most people have heard of how the scenario has played out in Jefferson County with the Board of County Commissioners and the warrants that were issued for Commissioners Krause and Jackson. And some folks are associating that warrant with the Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matt Harvey, which there's a whole nother line of legality going on there. But this was not from Matt Harvey's investigation, correct? You're exactly correct. There was a special prosecutor that was assigned to this case. There was a prosecutor in Grant County. Uh, his name slips my mind at this time that did the investigation. And, and this is basically two parallel uh, things going forward, one's criminal and one's civil. Um, the, the criminal uh, arrest was this week, the civil, which is moving forward, and, and that's going to be in court uh, with the three-judge panel for removal on March 26th and March 27th. And the warrant for Jackson and Krause concerned 42 separate charges, as I understand it, Steve? Yes, sir. It's my understanding it was 42 charges. I think it holds... Uh, a sentence up to a maximum of about 32 years. So uh, these charges were serious. Um, you know, obviously you're innocent until proven guilty. I will say that. Um, and they will be uh, tried in, in front of a jury or, uh, or, or I guess it's a, I'm assuming it's a jury trial uh, that will be picked to, to hear their case. What is the situation right now with the Jefferson County Commission and its five-member commission? Are you then reduced to three, or do they continue to serve during this? We will continue business as normal. Um, again, they're innocent until proven guilty by the court of law. Um, until until there is such a court action, then we will still we still have five commissioners. We'll still move forward. Um, obviously. At the end of the month is the hearing for the state code 667 code that could remove them from office. Um, if they are removed from office, then the county commissioners who are still seated will uh, pick the replacements. All right. So the Harvey petition, that hearing is coming up before the end of this month, I think you said, right? The 27th? Yeah, 26th and 27th. 26th yes, and 27th. That ruling will be made at uh, those days, or will they come back a week or a month or three months later, Steve? Do you know how quickly that is done? Um, nobody really knows. My, my guess is the fact that it's a three-judge panel, they will not rule. I'm just guessing they won't rule from the bench that day. I would assume it would be days after, if not weeks. I don't. We, nobody really knows. All right. I know you're not the lawyer involved in this, but if if uh, the, those commissioners lose and they are removed from office, is that then appealable to the next uh, circuit up? It is my understanding that any action in court is appealable, yes, sir. Okay, very good. And then this, this situation, I would just want to keep the two separate with the special prosecutor. Uh, if you could, one more time, tell me, wh- when does that date get set in court? They were just arraigned on Tuesday. I don't know if there's a scheduling order out yet. I'm not 100% sure when that will take place. Um, I would I would think they would be in court in the next 60 days for, for that action, but I'm not 100% sure. Shortly after this took place, there was a, uh, I don't want to mention the person's name, but there was uh, something published uh, on social media that effectively put together, and, and I think at least one of the commissioners may, may have also had a, uh, a hand in this, but I'm not 100% certain that th- this was all part of uh, a conspiracy involving uh, you, I, I, possibly the Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney's Office, possibly a high-ranking delegate uh, from the Eastern Panhandle as well. 
Steve, uh, have there been any behind the scenes, uh, I'll do this, you do that, quid pro quo kind of stuff been going on to get these two out of office? Absolutely not. I think I saw the same stuff you were mentioning, and that is extremely laughable. This, uh, obviously, Matt Hart, I know, I know Matt Harvey was accused of having his fingers in this. That's why there was a special prosecutor that was assigned to this case. Uh, Matt Harvey did not have anything to do with the prosecution. It was the prosecutor from Grant County. So what uh, what they're doing, they're trying to gaslight, trying to say uh, they were illegally prosecuted. And, you know, they're just trying to distract from what's really going on. And, you know, what what has what is going on, it's pretty simple. They turned a political disagreement into a criminal offense by failing to do their job and harming the citizens of Jefferson County. It's pretty simple. Were, were the two commissioners, sorry, John, one more question here. Were the two commissioners paid during the time when they were not attending the meetings, the two commissioners in question? Yes, that was one of the um, one of the criminal complaints that they actually did receive their paycheck and their benefits and uh, insurance uh, for one or the retirement while they uh, protested for three months and did not attend county commission meetings yes sir steve this is john gilstrap <clears throat> what was the root political disagreement <clears throat> they they did not want to appoint a fifth commissioner um the fifth commissioner which was a vacated position by commissioner claire Ath, um we we the commission by law has to appoint that commission seat they wanted to wait until the election which if we waited till the election, that would be illegal. And if the, if the commission agreed to do that, all four of us would be hemmed up right now. But that's it. all four of us, meaning, meaning Commissioner Krause, Jackson, myself, and Commissioner Tad, if we agreed to do that. But it's because the they wanted a commissioner that represented a certain point of view. Is that right? I, w- I would say they would want a friend on there that that was uh, maybe maybe aligned with their their political strategy. Yes. And what is that political strategy, as far as you know? Um, total destruction. That's all. <laughs> I, that's all. Of, I know. of what? I, I, nobody really knows. Nobody knows other than uh, total destruction. Okay, so the it's not it's not like this is tight, right? I mean, everybody's Republican on on this board, so except for Jane Tapp. Okay, fair enough. So, but but that's that's not what's in play. Was that the seat that was in play? No. Okay. So I I, I just don't understand the the scorched earth approach. It's like violent agreement that ends up with with uh, people being arrested. I I I don't understand, and, and they won't come on the show. I don't understand from your knowledge what was it? What sword were they falling on? In, in within their protest uh no nobody really knows i mean they 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 try to uh deflect uh, uh several areas that that was um that, you know making excuses to try to deflect why they weren't coming um didn't show up for meetings but no one really knows to be honest with you so what is happening now? I mean, all business is personal, right? You, so now that they're, they've been forced to attend and um, despite being arrested and they've met bail and they will be reattending meetings now, is any real work being done by the commission through all of this? Well, we're, we're still moving forward. Yes, sir. We're, we're, we're still moving forward with business as usual. Um, you know, we're, we're meeting every week. We have a budget meeting today and Tuesday. We have another county, a regular county commission meeting next week. So we're we're still approving, um, you know, probate, hiring, uh, new positions. Um, the, but one one thing that we're not doing in Jefferson County right now is we're not attracting any new businesses because businesses does not want to locate to a county that has political turmoil that has that like we have here right now. Prior to November, uh, September, um, we did have three large companies looking at Jefferson County that was going to bring high-paying te- high jobs, high-tech jobs. And they have since pulled out um, pretty much immediately as soon as this turmoil started. 
And it's hard to really gauge how much we truly lost because I know one of the companies was going to hire over 100 folks, and they were, they were going to pay over 100000 per um, per employee. Wow. That's a good job. Yes. Didn't happen. It's a good job for Jefferson County, West Virginia, that's for sure. Yeah, for sure. Steve Stoller, for our guest, is the president of the uh, Jefferson County Commission. Steve, when I look at the Secretary of State's website, I see for the Jefferson County Commission, there are seven names filed to run. Michael Mood, Matt McKinney are Republicans. Uh, Natalie uh, Grantham, uh, friend. Uh, Jacob Paris, Jack Hefeste, David Tab, and James Walsh. Uh, whose seats are those folks running for? They, those seats are Commissioner Tab's seat. She is, uh, she's not seeking another term. That's a six-year term. That's the middle way seat. Um, and then the Charlestown seat, which is a, which is a four year, four years remaining one Commissioner Ass seat is, is what they will be filling. All right. So you need two new members of the commission, possibly. Is that correct? We we could potentially have two new members for the, on the Jefferson County Commission next year, um, if I think we I think I know where you're going with this. Yeah. If the, the commissioners, the, uh, Commissioner Krause and Jackson, are removed, um, we will then appoint that position. Uh, the commissioner will appoint that position until next election cycle, which is this fall. So essentially, January we could have four brand new commissioners. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah, and that's that's quite an interesting turnover. And uh, I, I'm not sure you may, you probably know the temperature of the room better than I do in regards to the support for Commissioners Kraus and Jackson in Jefferson County. Uh, but uh, address that a little bit in terms of uh, what potential changes you could be seeing a year from now. Well, obviously, uh, a year from now, we could it, it could be a whole new makeup of the board. Um, um, we don't know. I mean, obviously, the election will take place, and we'll certainly see uh, in November. Um, we'll have a better idea who's going to run on the ballot uh, this primary, which I think is May 11th. So it's it's kind of a wait to see, and and obviously, we're going to wait to see what the uh, the type of actions come out of the court as well, too. Whether it's a we're going to be putting four new members on next year or two. What will the process be? I, I, I don't know if there's been any changes, but what will the process be like if you have to appoint two new commissioners in the next few days, weeks, months? Um, if, if if we have to appoint two new commissioners, basically the same law applies as for for how we appointed uh, Commissioner Majesty. Um, they the law says they don't have to be from the district. They have to be Republican for 60 days, um, but they do not have to live in the district. Now, um, I'm going to go back to this session. Uh, Senator Barrett, Jason Barrett, he moved a bill through Charleston that lays out a more defined, better defined process for commission seats, com for appointed commissioner seats, or any, or any political seat for that matter, I, I think, um, for five county commission seat, uh, shoot, five county commission members, yes, as we have it in Jefferson County and Berkeley County, we're the only two counties in the entire state that has five commissioners. The rest, the other fifty-three counties, they have three county commissioners. In regards to the legislation uh, that uh, the legislature that just concluded in. Um, Ch Charleston, Steve, was there any particular items other than the Barrett uh, law that you mentioned? He spoke with us extensively about that, by the way. Was there anything else that you noted in regards to how it would affect the economics of Jefferson County or the quality of life? That that particular law? Uh, anything else other than the Jason Barrett law that uh, you saw that was passed in, in Jefferson, in uh, um, Charleston? No, no um, there, was, there, was a, there was another law that was passed um, related to elections you know this was a obviously election year and and try, so they were how do I say it the uh, our delegation was risk adverse I guess but they did there was another law that was passed where if you it's a, I call it a sore loser law if you lose in the primary mm -hmm. you can't run on another party 
uh, there was a loophole that someone has found and he said you couldn't run on another party, but it didn't say you could be nominated by another party. So that was added into into that code and voted on and passed down in Charleston this year as well. Did you get any encouragement on the possibility of home rule being passed in the future? Obviously, it didn't make it this time around, but home rule for counties, Steve. Uh, yes, I, I, to be honest with you, I didn't follow that a lot. Um, you know, one... I will tell you one of the bills I did follow a little bit was Wayne Clark's uh, bill on the farm. It was the farm winery bill mm-hmm. um, that kind of loosens the uh, the noose around people's neck that they can actually you know open up a business on the farm. It makes a little e- it makes it a little easier um, and is not as restricted. So that was a, that was a bill obviously that I was I was following a little bit as well. But uh, um, thank I want to thank um, Delegate Clark for passing that. That's going to be be a big help for Jefferson County. It it always appears that right at the Loudoun County line, all our vineyards and breweries they stop there. I think this bill will help us be able to expand that type of winery business and brewery business into Jefferson County and have that flow from from Loudoun come over into our county. It's a it's a multi million dollar business in Loudoun, and it literally just stops at the county line. Oh, it's it's one hundred percent true. I- my wife, uh, last spring, early summer, Steve, a bunch of her friends from high school in Pittsburgh got together, and uh, they stayed in Harper's Ferry, and when they went out and visited wineries, everything was across the border in Virginia. All that business went yeah, to another and, state. And, yep, 100%. And and I think it, with this bill, I think we'll be able to be competitive, um, and we'll hopefully see some more wineries, breweries open in Jefferson County. It'll help out our agriculture, tourism here. And obviously, it'll, it'll be a great revenue generator for the county. John. Steve, I was driving down um, Flowing Springs Road and driving down 480 and some other roads. It seems like a spigot has opened on huge housing developments. Is there a big housing boom coming in Jefferson County? And are we at all concerned about the road capacity? Well, uh, I will first say that the road capacity is uh, dealt with at the state level with the West Virginia Department of Highways. It's not a it's not a county. Um, I'm gonna say it's not a county issue, but it's a, it's it, the state highway typically says you don't tell us what to do, we'll tell you what to do. <laughs> not so many words, okay? I want to start there. But yes, well, there are a few uh, developments coming in. Some of these developments that you probably saw were old developments that were approved back in uh, 2005, and they're coming back to life. I know there's one on 480. Um, that, that development was approved um, for almost 20 years. It was on the books for 20 years, and they're finally building it right now. Um, and as far as Flowing Springs Road, um, the one that I, I believe you're referring to, that's, a, uh, that's right on Flowing Springs Road, that's, that was, uh, I believe there was an approval that expired on that property um years ago um the, a lot of this stuff was in the hopper and then the recession hit and it just took a long time for those to, to come back to life so uh, say we're having a, i would say we're having a little bit of a, a boom here in housing um obviously with the interest rates so high um people are not selling their homes because they're locked in at about a three percent uh interest rate so the only game in town is these national builders building these homes that they can move in. Uh, there's not a lot of resale activity right now. So in the Jefferson County has its zoning and I, the, as I drive through the bucolic, you know, I'm new to the area, right? So as I drive through the bucolic farmlands of Jefferson County, am I really looking at a lot of future housing developments and townhouses and such? And, um, no, unlike Berkeley County, Jefferson County does not have countywide sewer and water. Um, most of the development that, is, that you're seeing is concentrated where you should put development off the main road. You get on a back road in Jefferson County, and and um, maybe you knew this. My family, we're, we're fifth-generation farmers here. We've been around for a little while. I will, you come down, I'll take you on every back road in Jefferson County. I think I know most of them. Um, so the invitation is open. But I'll be happy to show you around. You get on a back road, um, the roads are, like I said, there's a lot of agriculture once you get on the back roads. Our, our 
development is mainly concentrated on the on the main highways where our sewer and water and our gas infrastructure is located. Steve Stella for our guest here on the program as we get into our final couple minutes here. Steve, I know we've talked to you about this before, and I know that you got S- uh, sorry ethics committee clearance in regards to the solar farms and the financial interest your family has in that too. But it's popped up again in our comments section. And uh, the question is, uh, I'm interested in him responding about knowing his family was going to invest in solar farms prior to voting to permit solar farms. Do you have a comment on that? Yes, I'm glad glad somebody asked that question. Um, When I got elected, I did... I sent a letter to the ethics department and I asked them if I could participate or should participate or had a conflict um, if I voted for an ordinance that would allow solar in agricultural districts. Um, The ethics department uh, replied. They said I do not or did not have to recuse myself. However, uh, because of perception, I recused myself anyway. I did not participate in the ordinance rewrite or update. Um, excuse me. Um, the the solar ordinance it did pass the uh, the planning commission um, unanimously, and it also passed the county commission level unanimously. I had recused myself on both of those boards. You Thank no, you for that. Were, Thank you for that question. Sure, you were, you were no longer on the the uh, planning committee. I'm still on the planning commission. Yes, we we have 20, 21 boards that we divide up in January, and I'm still on that board. But during the time that the solar ordinance was discussed, I had recused myself and sat in the hallway. The solar issue was part of the Jackson and Kraus protest, was it not? You still there, Steve? Yes, sir. I lost you there a second. Uh, okay. Yeah, the, the, the yeah. solar connection with you and your family and the board was part of the Krauss Jackson protest, was it not? They they were trying to deflect in that direction, but I mean, they were trying to make issues, but there was, uh, again, it was just a deflection of for them not showing up and doing their elected, du- their elected duty to show up and um, do their job. As I understand it, uh, there was a groundbreaking involving solar in Jackson. Commissioner Jackson actually showed up to that as well. Did you, is that correct? Yeah, there was a excuse me. There was a groundbreaking at the Blake Solar Project out on Route 115, close to the St. James Catholic Church. That um, that Commissioner Jackson showed up for. She was at the groundbreaking. Um, that was in our local newspaper, and then. Um, once once the, there was a couple of people that were upset about it, uh, she changed her position. And that, that, that uh, picture resurfaced in the paper and on social media several more times um, just to, you know, um, just, just to call. I, I guess they were calling her out why she was why, why, asking why she was at the groundbreaking when now she's turned and as and, and against solar. I don't know. It's kind of weird. But... Um, yeah, so it was interesting. <laughs> when is your next commission meeting, Steve? We have a commission meeting next Thursday evening, a, a regular commission meeting next Thursday evening at 6 o'clock. Are you expecting Commissioners Jackson and Krause to attend? I would assume, yes, I, I would assume they would attend. Um, like I said earlier in the segment, they're, they are not, they have not been removed from office. Uh, they are they're, uh, innocent until proven guilty. There has been no court action, so I'm assuming they will attend. Um, um, obviously, them not attending meetings is what got them hemmed up in the first place. So I would certainly assume they're, they're going to attend. Steve, thanks so much for your time this morning. Appreciate it. Thank you.